Future Chairs No Waiting, episode number 651, Mayberry Days 2021 preview. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the folks over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Drop by over at Weavers and check it out. They got the great book by Scott Hopkins, Mayberry Trivia. You need to get ready for Mayberry Days Trivia. You need this book. Head over and check it out. And while you're there, you might want to get you some Miracle Salve. <laughs> they actually have Miracle Salve over to Weaver's Department Store and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producer of this episode, 651, are the folks from the Mayberry Meetup. Thanks all you guys for helping support the show. And thank you for being here with me in Mayberry. Wow, guys, it is always great fun to spend some time just talking about the Andy Griffith Show. We do it almost every week and here we are again with mayberry days about to be upon us oh my goodness uh, how can you not be happy about that things are great during mayberry days so we're going to talk about that we're going to do a little bit of trivia and then we'll hear from randy turner with this week in mayberry history so let's get a little background music all right and we're going to talk about the Mayberry Days. Mayberry Days is coming up, I mean, this week. We are here, guys. Uh, we have made it to Mayberry Days week, and it is time to head that direction. Now, you're already a couple of days late because whether you're watching this when it comes out on Monday live for the live show, the live premiere version, or if you wait and see it on Tuesday or listen to it on Tuesday when it comes out, you're already late because Mayberry Days actually got started actually the 18th of september this year with a colin ray concert oh my goodness can you believe it colin ray was in uh, mayberry he came to town and he did a concert on the 18th that was a saturday uh, of mayberry days he was there and you know he he's a huge andy griffith show fan and i was able to meet him a couple of years ago and uh, he, he enjoys being able to come to Mayberry Days. I assume he probably had some kind of scheduling thing, so he couldn't be there during the actual Mayberry Days that this week. But he came on Saturday, so it was a big thing. Folks, if you want to make sure you don't miss out on things that are going on at Mayberry Days, you need to head over to MayberryDays.com. Now, that will take you to the official Mayberry Days website, and it has all the information that you would want to see or hear about what's going on in town during Mayberry Days. Now, unless I should back up. Mayberry Days is held each year in Mount Airy, North Carolina. I'm not even sure what number year this is. This is the 30-something Mayberry Days. I'm not quite even sure what day it actually is. Uh, but you can head over there and check it out. And they got all kinds of information about the events, the special guests, the schedules, where to get tickets. Uh, they got pictures from past years. You can you can get all kinds of great information about Mayberry Days. And if you're a fan of this podcast, you would love Mayberry Days. Okay, because what we talk about here, I've always said, and I keep saying, it's real inside baseball. And and by that I mean we really talk about the Andy Griffith Show and get into some real details. Folks who enjoy that kind of thing would, I believe absolutely love Mayberry Days. Now, Mayberry Days is put on by the Surrey Arts Council there in Surrey County, North Carolina. It's where uh, Mount Airy is located. And they use Mayberry Days as a way to raise money for the Surrey Arts Council. So when you buy these tickets, when you, uh, when you come to the events uh, that are during Mayberry Days, you're helping support the Surrey Arts Council and all they do to keep the Andy Griffith Show and Mayberry alive. Now, I will say not everything at Mayberry Days requires a ticket. So don't feel like you're going to miss out completely if you can't afford to do all the different events. But there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. And so let's uh, let's just first off, let's talk about some of the people that are going to be there. This year, confirmed, uh, at least as of this recording, uh, you're going to have Betty Lynn will be the, in town. She's, she lives in Mount Airy. And she'll be, of course, she's Thelma Lou. Got Rodney Dillard coming to town, the darling boy, the the, the guitar playing darling boy. He'll be there. Ronnie Shell is supposed to be there. Now, he played uh, Duke Slater on Gomer Pyle. 
Uh, but he was also on two episodes of the Andy Griffith Show. Great guy. I love Ronnie. He's going to be doing a show. We'll talk about that in a minute. Margaret Carey will be there. She was uh, Helen Scobie and also Bess Muggins. Uh, basically, if you ever watched the show, you you would kind of think it's the same person. But, uh, but Margaret is a wonderful lady. Uh, she'll be there. Dennis Rush is going to be there. He played Howie, Opie's friend that... Uh, uh, probably most memorable to me is when they were doing the newspaper. It was over in Op- it was in Howie's uh, I don't know shed garage where they were actually printing up Opie's newspaper that got everybody in trouble. He'll be there. Calvin Pe- Peeler he'll be there again. He, uh, Pe- uh, Calvin was there a couple of years ago. He was in uh, some of the uh, Mayberry RFD episodes. Uh, that he was a really great guy. So he's definitely somebody you'd want to meet. Leroy McNeese will be there. He was one of the country boys. Uh, he's the one that said, appreciate you letting us in, invest in your music company, Mr. Maxwell. <laughs> Leroy's a great guy. Joy Ellison, well, she played Margaret Carey's daughter, played, uh, you know, best, uh, Effie Muggin, and she also was Mary Wiggins and Mary Scoby, and she played, like, about several parts. They're going to be there. And Clint Howard is supposed to be there. He was Leon. Of course, he's Ron Howard's younger brother will be there. Special guests also include Karen Knotts, of course, Don Knotts' daughter. And she played the receptionist for Opie in Return to Mayberry. Little, don't know if you remember that or not, but in the Return to Mayberry movie back in 86, I think I'm getting the year right, she played uh, Opie's secretary at the newspaper. And Dick, Dick Atkins, he's going to be there. Now, he did a movie with Andy, a TV movie with Andy and Johnny Cash called Murder in Coweta County. I think I said it right, Coweta. Uh, he, and he will be there, and they'll be showing the movie during the week as well. So those are just some of the guests. There may be other guests uh, that will uh, be at Mayberry Days, but those are c- confirmed currently as I record this. All right, so let me just give you a rundown of some of the things that are going on starting Wednesday because the podcast comes out on Tuesday. So I'm going to start on Wednesday. You can, again, you can go to the MayberryDays.com, click on the schedule, and you can get all this information. On Wednesday, there's going to be uh, guided tours of the Playhouse you can do. There's a Mayberry Effect movie. That's right, the Mayberry Effect movie is going to be available, and you'll be able to watch it. It's going to be at 1 o'clock. Uh, they're going to show it at the Earl Theater right there in in Mount Airy, the historic Earl Theater. And followed by followed right after that at the Earl Theater, they're going to show Murder in Coweta County, and they're going to show it a couple of times that day. And then later in the day, this is all just Wednesday. Maybe your days is barely starting, and look at all the fun you're going to have. That'll all be going on as part of the Surrey Arts Council uh, program. Now, Wednesday night, just so folks know, there's also going to be a premiere over at the Creekside Theater for folks that contributed to the Mayberry Man movie, right? So that will be going on as well, but that's Wednesday night, and it's only for the folks that have actually contributed to helping produce and create the Mayberry Man movie. But hold on, I'll give you more information about the Mayberry Man movie in a little while. It would be absolutely wonderful to go and watch the Mayberry Effect because I think it should be a double feature. The Mayberry Effect documentary by Chris Hudson, great movie, and then watch the Mayberry Man movie. Those will both be coming up. So then Thursday, let's jump on into Thursday events at Mayberry Days. Uh, again, guys, there's a lot of stuff you can go and do that don't really cost uh, cost you anything. You can go check out the Visitor Center. Uh, of course, the Andy Griffith Museum does cost something, but it's a very fun thing to go and do. Uh, you can, there's a guided tour of the Andy Griffith Playhouse. Uh, there's the old, old time music heritage hall. There'll be music being played at the, at the old time music heritage hall from 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. So you can drop by and hear that. There's a Mayberry Days golf tournament. The Emmet is what it's called. That'll be over at the Cross Creek, Cross Creek Country Club. <laughs> That'll be something fun to see. Uh, but uh, if you play golf, maybe you could be in that. Leroy McNeese is going to be having his concert. Now, this is something uh, Leroy is absolutely a wonderful man, great person. So they're going to have a concert at the Andy Griffith Playhouse at 1 p.m. All these things that require tickets, you can go to MayberryDays.com and go to the tickets, and you can pick them up. 
you can pick up a ticket. At 1 p.m. also, so these are at the same time, so you got to kind of pick and choose. Karen Knotts is going to be at the Earl uh, presenting her Tied Up in Knots, a book talk. So she has a brand new book, Tied Up in Knots, that's coming out, and she's going to be doing a discussion about the book. And it should be a lot of, it should be really good. Uh, so that'll be at the Earl at, at 1 p.m. Again, you can get tickets to these things uh, there on the website, MayberryDays.com. Ronnie Shell is going to be doing his show at the Earl starting at 3 p.m. And it's going to be called Andy, Don, and Jim, My Memories of Three Mayberry Legends. That's a, that'll be the next thing uh, popping up there at the Earl and definitely something you'd want to go see. Ron, Ronnie, I mean, he is just a, uh, he, he has got such amazing memories of things there with the Andy Griffith show. So definitely go and check that out. There's uh, following that there's stuff at the, at the Earl that you can do some flat foot dance lessons. Those will be there. There's a golf dinner over at the golf, at the country club that's for the folks that played golf over there. But you can probably buy tickets to that, I think, because uh, the entertainment is by T. Graham Brown. Oh, my goodness. So you can come and have dinner and be entertained by T. Graham Brown at the same time. Uh, again, there's lots more stuff. I'm going to start skipping over a little because there's so much. So on Friday, uh, on Friday... You can uh, you can also you can play checkers. There's the, all this kind of stuff until 9:30 in the morning, when the mayor's proclamation occurs at the Blackman Amphitheater. That's a free event. You can come and check it out. You'll be able to see all the cast members and stars that are going to be present at Mayberry Days. They'll be there, so it's a great time to come down and take pictures of them. You'll be able to see them. You may not be able to talk to them because you know they're got they got other things they got to do as soon as that's over. But you can definitely go down and have your camera and be able to take pictures of them while they're sitting on the stage as the proclamation takes place. That's at 930. And then uh, then there, there's a play area for kids that opens at 11 o'clock. It's called Opie's Clubhouse. So kids can go over there and have, have a good time and, and play. Uh, there's, a, there's also a pickle land where you can get pickles. You can win. <laughs> <laughs> pickles and they're not Aunt B's care for the pickles and that's right there on the grounds of the Andy Griffith Playhouse and if you're into it you can actually be in the Mr. Tucker ap apple peeling contest you can do that as well if you're a good apple peeler uh, that would be fine uh, there's a there's more concerts Mayberry Melodies at 11 o'clock there's a pork chop eating contest now that's kind of an informal contest or one that uh, you can go to the snappy lunch and buy your pork chop sandwiches i think you buy them and basically whoever can eat the most in a certain period of time and they have to be all the way is the winner they're not all there at the same time usually uh, but it's uh, they've got from 12 30 to 1 30 to eat as many pork chop sandwiches as they can <laughs> so so if you're hungry go give it a try that's over at the snappy lunch at 12 30. then at two o'clock there's a doug dillard concert uh well it's not doug dillard it's a doug dillard tribute concert featuring rodney dillard in the dillard band they'll be rodney will be there at the andy griffith playhouse at 2 p.m uh, and also at 2 p.m., if you wanted to see John Floyd, he's a comedian, and they call him the Mouth of Mayberry. He'll be over at the Earl. You can check that out. John's a really, really good guy, too. There's a pie-eating contest. There's a youth trivia. Starts at 3.30. So if you're youth, you can go. Or if you want to feel good about yourself, you can go and participate in the youth trivia that starts at 3.30 at the Blackman Theater. Now, at 4.30 is the world championship of andy griffith show trivia that will be at the blackman theater uh the only thing you have to do to be in the youth or the uh, the world championship trivia is you have to buy a fan and they'll be there you'll have to buy a fan i think it's a couple of dollars and then you can participate and try to get a place on stage for the championship rounds and, and that'll be uh, great and if you didn't get to see t graham brown at the golf tournament dinner, he is having a concert at the Historic Earl at 7 p.m. on Friday night as well. James Gregory will be over at the, at the Andy Griffith Playhouse 
James Gregory, the comedian, the funniest man in America at 7.30 p.m. And again, you don't have to remember all this. You can go to MayberryDays.com and look at the schedule. All this is there. Uh, when you get into town, there's also a thing you can pick up that's called the Mayberry Confidential. There'll be little newspapers laying all over town at different businesses. Go by and pick up one. It's got this entire schedule in there. Okay, so you'll have it to carry around in your pocket. I know because I do it every year. <laughs> that's how I keep up with where I need to be. All right. So on Saturday, Saturday, things really get kicked off at nine o'clock in the morning with the Mayberry Days Parade right down Main Street. So head over and get you a, a good spot on the parade route and you can see everybody come down through town. So there's you just never know what's going to be going on. Uh, there'll be all the tribute artists will be walking around. So you'll see Floyd and Barney and Gomer and Goober and, and Otis and Andalina. And you're going to see them all. Howard Sprague. I'm, I'm leaving out people. I shouldn't have ever started naming them. I'm sorry, guys, if I left you out there. Briscoe, uh, Mr. McBeavy. I, I can't remember. I'm sure I'm leaving out some people. Aunt B. There's lots of people. So you'll see all of them. You'll see the stars. They'll be riding in cars. Head over to downtown. And you need to get there before 9 o'clock because it gets really crowded, believe it or not. Uh, so just, uh, just, just have a good time there at the Mayberry Days Parade. Uh, there's also all weekend you can go and check out the Andy Griffiths Museum. That'll be open. There's a there's a who's been messing up the bulletin board auction, so you'll be able to check that out at the Blackman Theater. Uh, that'll be at 10:30 right after the parade. Basically, there's a Mayberry Days wish, whistling contest, their championship, same place there at the Blackman at about 11:30. Uh, there's Mayberry Idol. There's che there's checkers you can play. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Michael Hoover is doing a Memories of Elvis concert at 2 p.m. at the Andrew Griffith Playhouse. Uh, Professor Brower's lecture. Now, he's Professor Brower. Neil Brower is featured here on the podcast a lot. And he'll be doing his lecture at 2 p.m. at the Earl, which will be followed directly after that by the Andy Griffith Show Rerun Watchers Club annual meeting. Uh, uh, they're saying that's going to be at the Blackman at 4.30. So, okay, they, they've moved it. Usually that's in the theater as well. So it's going to be at the Blackman. So that'll be fun. Everybody come over there and we'll have our meeting outside. Wow, that's a big that's big news. I, didn't, I just read that. Uh, then at 7 p.m., kind of starting to wrap up the Mayberry Days event, is Colonel Tim's Talent Time starts, and it's at the Andy Griffith Playhouse. The last event scheduled uh, for Saturday, uh, the Isaacs are going to be at the Earl, and it's at 7.30, so if you'd like to go to that. There's still stuff going on on Sunday, just a little bit. They're going to be having another showing of the Mayberry Effect movie, and I've heard there might be a third showing, so be watching the schedules around town to find out when that's going to be. If you're wanting to see it, it'll be at 1 p.m. on Sunday if you want to stick around uh, Mount Airy. And then there's uh, the, Lamp, the Lisbon Family Gospel Concert at 6.30 that evening. Uh, and other things going on through the day. So go and check out all the cool stuff there at the website. Uh, it's all there. You can buy tickets. You can get everything. And you can look for the Mayberry Confidential. They don't have it ready yet. They're in the process of getting it. That will have all the information in it. If you're watching the video version, I'm showing a picture of the 2020 uh, in 2021 so last year's edition of mayberry confidential so look for a paper like that it's a it's a newspaper that'll be sitting around and you'll be able to enjoy now i did say uh about mayberry man just want to throw that out it's not really associated with the uh the story arts council so they won't probably be getting money from it but it's all happening during mayberry day so you can go see the mayberry effect uh, and then you can head over on Thursday, beginning Thursday at the Creekside Cinemas. Uh, they've got uh, they've got movies over there, just regular movies. But on Thursday, uh, the twenty third, Mayberry Man is going to be shown there, starting on Thursday. I think uh, I think it's every day, Friday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. They're going to be showing Mayberry Man four times a day at 12.30, 3 o'clock, and 5.30, and 8 p.m. So you can go and watch the Mayberry Man movie if you're so inclined to do so. And enjoy yourself and finally get to see the Mayberry Man movie. 
So there you go, folks. So that's all happening during Mayberry Days this this week. Guys, come on to Mayberry Days. I'll be there as Floyd. Be sure to come up and say hi to me uh, uh, and tell me you listen to the podcast. I always enjoy meeting you guys uh, when you're there. Uh, so matter of fact, as you're hearing this, I, I'm already there. <laughs> I had to pre-record all this. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to meeting you. And if you're there, definitely come and talk to me. So that is news about Mayberry Days. Oh, I went kind of long on that. So let's uh, let's do a few trivia questions. All right. We're only going to do about four since we're running a little late. Here we go. Number one. Trivia question number one. This is just trying to help you get ready for the Mayberry Days trivia. Now, <laughs> I've got to tell you, Mayberry Days trivia, the world championship of Andy Griffith Show trivia, is a, is a little bit harder, okay? <laughs> but we've been working on it. So here we go. Question number one is true or false. None of the questions at Mayberry Days are true or false. True or false. Aunt B portrayed Lady Mayberry better than Clara. Okay, Aunt B portrayed uh, Lady Mayberry better than Clara. True or false? Okay, you got a 50-50 chance on this one. The answer is false. That's not true. No, she didn't do as good a job as Clara, and she knew it, and she ended up giving her the role, right? So, all right. So who, question number two, who made costumes for the Centennial play? Who made costumes for the Centennial Play? Now, this is not that easy to answer. Who made costumes for the Centennial Play? All right, can I got your guess? Okay, you can guess. There's nothing. This is for fun. All right, final. Here's the answer. I'll give you the question one more last time. Who made costumes for the Centennial Play? The answer is Aunt B. Aunt B did. Aunt B made them. All right, number three. Okay, staying with that same theme. What part did Aunt B attempt to play in the Centennial play? What part did Aunt B attempt to play, to play in the Centennial play? What part was it? All right. I'm not going to give you very long to think about this one. What part did Aunt B attempt to play in the Centennial play? It was Lady Mayberry. It was the first question. I gave you the answer. <laughs> did you get it? I'm trying to be good to you. All right. Let's make this one a little harder. What part did Andy play in the Centennial play? What part did he play? <laughs> So here's, I'll give you multiple choice on this one. What part did he play? Did he play Colonel Harvey? Did he play John Wayne? <laughs> did he play Nougatuck? Or did he play James Merriweather? Which one did Andy play? Colonel Harvey, John Wayne, Nougatuck, or James Merriweather? What part did Andy play? The answer is he was James Merriweather. <laughs> so those are those are some trivia questions uh, it's not very many i realize but uh hopefully you enjoyed it and had some fun there so all right guys it is time for us to hear from randy turner with this week in mayberry history welcome to this week in mayberry history a report by special correspondent randy turner of the gomer and cooper pile comic book literary guild of the mayberry historical society paul henning is best known as the man behind the beverly hillbillies petticoat junction and green acres but one of his last television writing credits before those shows was on the andy griffith show Paul was born on September the 16th, 1911, in Independence, Missouri, where he grew up on a farm. Like most early television writers, Paul first wrote for old-time radio, writing for series such as Fibber McGee and Molly and the George Burns and Gracie Allen show. His first television work was as a producer for a 1951 television musical program featuring Italian opera singer Ezio Pinza. 
He then produced a new show that was added to alternate weekly with Penza's show. Another musical program that starred Dennis Day, best known as one of the supporting players in the Jack Benny program on radio. In 1953, Paul began writing regularly for the TV version of one of the shows he had written. After writing and producing for several projects, he created his first series, The Bob Cummings Show, which was later called Love That Bob in Syndication. Cummings played Bob Collins, a Hollywood photographer and ladies' man. Part of the storyline involved his young secretary, who he called Schultze, who pined for him, and sometimes intentionally sabotaged his dating plans with other women. Schultze was played by Ann Davis, who two decades later would be better known as Alice, the housekeeper of the Brady Bunch. As a bit of non-Mayberry trivia that I just can't resist adding, when Stan Lee created the character of Iron Man, he created a similar character to Schultze to serve as Stark secretary, Pepper Potts. Pepper was even originally drawn with brown hair styled like Schultze's, but five issues later, the decision was made that she resembled the TV character too much, so her hair was changed to red in a different style. In 1961, Paul wrote the episode Crime Free Mayberry for The Andy Griffith Show, in which two criminals posed as an FBI representative and a press photographer in Mayberry to give awards to Andy and Barney for the town's low crime rate. That same year, a Rock Hudson endorsed day film co-written by Paul titled Lover Come Back earned him an Academy Award nomination. In 1962, Paul created the incredibly successful series, The Beverly Hillbillies. The series ran for 274 episodes until it was canceled in the same rural purge by CBS that ended Mayberry RFD. The cast included Nancy Culp as Secretary Miss Hathaway, a similar character to one she had sometimes played in Paul's first series, The Bob Cummings Show. CBS was so pleased, they asked him to create another series the following year, which he did. Petticoat Junction was also immensely successful. Two years later, CBS made the unusual move to greenlight any pilot Paul wanted to make. He didn't have time to develop a third series, but he had Jay Summers, a colleague and regular writer for Petticoat Junction, develop a TV version of Jay's old-time radio program, Granby's Green Acres, which Paul produced as Green Acres. By the way, in the radio version, Ebb, the farmhand, was played by Parley Bear, Mayberry's own Mayor Stoner. The storekeeper, Mr. Kimball, was played by Howard McNear in the first episode of the radio series, though Howard did not continue the role. Paul's rural shows contained far broader humor than that found in the Mayberry series, but they all ended when CBS decided to change their programming away from rural-themed shows in spite of the series' popularity. Paul's best-known work afterward was co-writing the 1988 film Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Paul passed away in 2005 at the age of 93. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for listening. And remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. Well, thank you, Randy. Randy always has such amazing information. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on any of the fun Mayberry stuff that Randy comes up with, send him an email at turnersgrade at gmail.com. Turnersgrade at gmail.com. And he'll make sure you don't miss out on anything. Uh, if you've ever heard that report, that was from 2018, actually. Because uh, I gave Randy the week off uh, in, uh, in the last couple of weeks have actually been reruns. But honestly, could I didn't remember that stuff. So I'm really glad we watched it again or we played it again. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Friends, it is always fun to be here in Mayberry with you and just to spend some time just talking about the Andy Griffith Show and enjoying ourselves. I would love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415 and leave a voicemail. Or you can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. I would love to hear from you about your thoughts about Mayberry Days, about what happened, what did you do during Mayberry Days. Give us a report. I would love to be able to play your report on future episodes of Two Chairs No Waiting. 
And I know other people would love to hear yours as well, because I'm kind of biased. I admit, I love Mayberry Days, and so I'm a little bit biased about what goes on there. So send me your reports, and we'll play them here on the podcast. Until next time, everybody, have a great Mayberry week, and we'll see you right back here on Two Chairs.